here on in, I'll do all the readings at Mass. But I, I prefer you guys reading, but for now, we'll cope. The first reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised that a trial by fire is occurring among you, as if something strange were happening to you. But rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also share and rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed be you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. But let no one suffer among you as a murderer, a thief, or evildoer, or an intriguer. Whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name of Jesus. For it is time for the judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, how will it end for those who fail to obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous one is barely saved, where will the godless and the sinner appear? As a result, those who suffer in accord with God's will hand their souls over to a faithful creator as they do good. The word of the Lord. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men arose against us, then would they have swallowed us up alive when their fury was inflamed against us. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, the torrents would have swept over us, over us would have swept the raging waters. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. We praise you, Lord. We acclaim you as Lord. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, the world would love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, and I have chosen you out of the world, the world hates us and you. Remember the word that I spoke to you. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours. And they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just stand here today at the lectern to preach, and get a good view of both sides of the chapel. Recently, I heard that maybe some of my homilies are too political. And I realized that um, politics is out there in the world, and politics represents the people. Okay? So the Gospels and the liturgy and the homily, of course, I believe, is meant to go to us as the people of God from the church, from the word, from the reading, out into the world. So the application of the ideas that come to us in the scriptures are very important. The application, the bringing the word out into the public is very important. Now I know our homily is here in this church, 
And I also know that because of Friends of the Word, it's broadcast throughout the world on our site and through the media, the, 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 the social media, the, the Facebook and Twitter and all those good sites that, that promote the word. Small word and big word. In our case, it's the big W, the word of God. So when we, when we look at the martyrs, and that's why I'm wearing red today, we focus on two early Christian martyrs, very early Christian, uh, Pochian and Hippolytus, uh, Eastern Rite saints, more popular in the Eastern Rite than in the West, but still early martyrs who were involved in controversies, especially Hippolytus. He was involved in the controversy between himself and the Pope. He thought that the Pope forgave people too easily who had been converted of their past sins. That, that, that's okay, that was all right, that was settled. You know, we don't have to go into the details of that. But as a, as a Christian leader, he was also persecuted for believing in Christ, for bringing Christ into the world through his preaching and through his example. Now, that should be our goal. The whole reading, the, the readings today from, from St. Peter as well as the Gospel, put out the plan, put out the, 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 the format, uh, the, the outline of what our lives as Christians, I don't want to say should be, but is. And Jesus says it very clearly, they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So don't, don't be so upset that you're uniquely persecuted. And, and I want to apply that to current events. How many churches have we seen that, that have been desecrated, internationally desecrated, from bombings to graffiti, to destruction of statues that represent figures of our faith? That's persecution. And so far, not in our world, our immediate world, no one has been killed because they're Christian. But that's not unusual today in our society. There are many Christians throughout the world that are persecuted and killed and martyred. Don't forget, if you die for your faith, you're a martyr for their faith, their faith in Christ. He's such a contradiction to the world. He makes it very clear. The world doesn't know who sent me. I know who sent me, speaking of himself, God the Father. But the world doesn't know who sent me. You do, us here and those who observe the word of God. Christians throughout the world believe that Jesus Christ was sent into the world by the Father to bring God's word and God's life into the world. And the world persecutes us for that. Now, there were times in our society in which the church was flying high, doing very well, politically, socially, uh, reputation-wise. In the last few decades, not so much. Maybe a lot of it is because of our own mistakes and failings. Fine. But you have to realize we are the church. We're made up of people but the Holy Spirit is with us at all times. So we always come back to the church. We always come back to the word to, to reinvigorate ourselves and to focus on what we are all about, why we are here. We are here to change the face of the world through our love, through our forgiveness, through our acceptance of all people. It doesn't matter what religion, what, what ethnic background acceptance of all people. We don't have to agree with all people, and indeed we can't in certain cases, but we can accept them, respect them. Now, that's where Christianity has that fine line because we have to stand with Christ and realize we're going to be adversaries to the world when that happens very often. I like this little story. I told it many times when I was first assigned as a campus minister at William Patterson, it was then college, um, some days I would go on campus with my collar and some days not. I mean, you know, depending on what the occasion was. But on the days I wore my collar, I would get two main reactions from not only students but staff as well. Some would catch my eye coming across the campus because I always walked it was good exercise, it was a big campus, uh, but it made me close to, to, to those I was serving. 
So the two reactions would be, one would look at me and see the collar and say, whether they knew me or not, hey, Father, how are you? Welcome. Good. Love that. And I would carry on conversation with them. The other reaction, as soon as they saw the collar, is this. People would put their face down or turn away. It was almost like I was catchy. <laughs> I was a danger. And, and, of course, I'm such an instigator. My, my mother used to call me an instigator, and I still am an instigator. I stir up trouble sometimes. I hope for the sake of good. Um, the people who looked away, I would ask directions to. I would say, oh, by the way, excuse me, do you know where such and such a building is? And most of the time I knew exactly where the buildings were. But I wanted to engage them. I wanted to engage with the people who didn't accept me or thought I was uh, an evil person or thought I was who knows what. And usually <laughs> those are the people that I became very close with and friendly with. There was one professor who was notoriously anti-Christian and definitely anti-Catholic. He was a history teacher, professor. And um, one day I got a call from him. His first name is Terry. And he was really rude. But, you know, you consider the source. Picked up the phone and, he's, and his response was, is this the priest? So I said, hi, yes, this is Father Lou. What can I do for you? And he says, I don't suppose you'd like to defend the church in my history class. We're doing medieval history and the history of the church. And you could say no, and I'll tell my class that you, you, you couldn't come. But you could say no, and, and, but I told them I would contact you because they said there's a priest on campus. Well, you, I, I mean, Mr. Instigator, I said, absolutely, Terry. I'll be there when, where, and let's go. Okay, made the appointment. And before I went to William Patterson, I was teaching at DePaul High School in Wayne, New Jersey. So I like teaching. I love teaching. Before I became, went to the seminary, I was teaching. So teaching is part of my shtick, you might say. Okay, so I go to class. He tells me what the subject is for the day, and I field questions, but I also give an overview of what the church is all about. From our origins, very quickly, origins to the present. Origins into the Old Testament, how as Christians we follow the Old Testament until Jesus and where we are today. A lot of questions. The whole class went by like in a few seconds. At the end of class, Terry comes up to me and says, um, want to have a cup of coffee? I said, oh, sure. I said, that was my reimbursement for the, the, the lesson. So we went to have coffee, and the first thing he asked when we sat down for coffee in the cafeteria was, would you like to teach on campus? Would you like to teach history in my department? I was thrilled. I said, yes, why? He said, because you weren't afraid of what you were saying. Even though I really tried to make you uncomfortable when I invited you, you, you weren't afraid, you stood forth, and you were able to answer the questions that the students asked Questions that I put into their heads, questions that were anti-Catholic and anti-Christian, you were able to answer them and put them on the right spot. And you weren't apologetic, you were straightforward, and I like a teacher like that. So I started teaching on campus. And, and the name of the course that I created was A History of the Church Through Art. I combined my artistic background and, and the history of the church. Okay, this homily is not about me, but it's about Christian persecution. People who are persecuted at, because we believe in Christ, because we want to follow Christ. And I'm sorry, it's not a 21st century phenomenon. It went on in the earliest days of the church. Christ, thousands of years ago, warned us, if the world hates you, realize they hated me first. So don't go be, being so uh, uh, chagrined or, or sympathetic toward yourself. Realize you should be proud to be persecuted. When, when graffiti is written on the walls of a church, yes, we have to wash it off, clean it, but not condemn. Pray for those who persecute us. And it, it's tough. And to the best of our ability, we have to be cooperative and work with those who persecute us. When we look in the world today and the civil unrest that's in the world and the period of COVID that we're in, we might say, church has nothing to do with that. Oh, 
and more than once I've commented on the governor of the state who said the, the numbers are going down that it has nothing to do with God. Well, my Italian got me and I realized he's wrong. Because as those who are working to heal people, those who are working in the hospitals, EMTs, firemen, police, they're, they're working to protect us. They're working to heal us. God is the healer. God is the creator. He sent us into the world with various talents, whether we have the talents to preach, to teach, to, to be medical people. God gave us those talents. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Even the scientists, God gave them the talent. Even the atheists who are scientists, God gave them that talent. What they do with it is up to them. And what we do with our talents is up to us. So yes, I do believe God intervened with New York State and New Jersey and getting into the hands and hearts of those who are the healers, those who, who bring healing and curing to, to people. And I pray, and I want all of us to pray, for a vaccination, for, for a vaccine, so that we can get through this, as we've gotten as a civilization through many viruses and many plagues. We can get through this with faith, focused on Christ. Peter makes it very, very clear. If they insulted you for the name of Christ, you are blessed because you're giving glory to God. So yes, I have commented on situation in the world and disturbances and civil unrest in the last few homilies, but the scriptures come out. I mean, how can I not apply these scriptures today to the 21st century events from coast to coast in our world? Again, we have to do with justice and love but we have to also stand up for what we believe as Catholics. We have symbols in our church. They represent who we are historically. We respect those symbols and we expect, in this country especially, all people to respect those symbols because we are a civilization and, and a constitutional country that respects all people, respects all religion, and, and mandates that we have the right to profess our faith. So if people think that's too political, open your eyes, open your hearts, and maybe Jesus will fill you. We now ask the Lord to be with us as we come to the table. Let us pray for our own intentions, for people who are ill, for all people who are suffering from the COVID virus, and for all medical staff assisting them. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our politicians, for what they represent, the people, that they rule and govern with justice and respect, in the name of God, we pray to the Lord. For our own private intentions that each of us has in our hearts, and I would like to add for my nephew, Salvatore, who is recovering from a, an accident he had last week, healing be with him, and healing be with all those for whom we are praying. We pray to the Lord. For our church leaders, Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, Richard, our pastor, and all those who serve the church and members of the church, all of us, we pray to the Lord that we might have strength to stand for what we believe. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we present these prayers to you in faith and confidence, knowing that they will challenge all those who hear them to be better Christians, I hope, through your name and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Having shared the word of God, we now share his holy bread and body in Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all of creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread at work of human hands. Let it become for us the bread of life. Through the mingling of this water and this wine, we have come to share in the divinity of Jesus, 
who became a human being to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all of creation. Through your goodness we have this wine, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that our prayers and sacrifices will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of all Christian martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your faith and your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is your right that you receive from all your creatures the redemption and praise that is deserving to you. And so with all your saints in one heart, we praise you and we add our voices to the angels as we celebrate our faith and acclaiming your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, Lord, the font of holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts of bread and wine that we bring to you, so they will become our nourishment through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took the bread of the meal of Passover. He blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we are gathered into the one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, our Archbishop Timothy, my Bishop Kevin, and all the clergy, including our pastor Richard, and those for whom we pray. Father, remember those who have died, especially recently through the COVID virus, and those who suffered in any way during the civil unrest present in our country. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his also be one in his resurrection. And we ask you to watch over all of our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us. Welcome us into heaven with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, our patrons, Mother Cabrini, John Nepomucene, St. Patrick, and our own personal patrons of our families, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the words of our Lord and brother, we speak to our Father as we pray together as one family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from everything that is evil and selfish and naive. Help us to be open to the presence of the challenge of our faith in this world and to stand firm as Catholics and Christians, proclaiming your faith and glorifying you through our own persecution. We ask this as we prepare the world for the return of Jesus in glory. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the Lord's peace be with all of you. And let's share that peace in our hearts and pray for those around us and in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus who gives his life so that we can have life eternal. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May his body and blood bring us to a full and everlasting life. Mm -hmm.